Doctors and nurses at the Konfonochi Teaching Hospital have called off their strike following concerns over security. And the opposition says a three billion Chinese loan government is borrowing from the Chinese government is a bad deal and the president must renegotiate. This is today's big story. Well, doctors and nurses at the Kung Fu Anochi Teaching Hospital went on strike over concerns of security for their safety following an attack by Abu Abu youth on them um, over an alleged uh, body of a baby who is alleged to have been stolen. Now, the doctors and nurses have called off their strike and we have on the line Kwame Frimpong, who is the public relations officer of the hospital to speak to us about the issue. So the latest is that doctors and nurses at the Kung Fu Anoche Teaching Hospital have called off their strike. The doctors and nurses went on strike following concerns over security following an attack on them by um, Abu Abu youth who stormed the hospital demanding the body of a child who is alleged to have died in the hospital. Uh, we're hoping to get onto the phone lines now Kwame Frimpong who is public relations officer of the Comfort Institution Hospital. It's great to have you here sir on today's big story. Good evening, sir, and thanks for joining us here on today's big story. Mr. Kwame Frimpong, if you can hear me, um, I want to know uh, what conclusions the doctors came to before calling off their strike. Well, uh, we're still trying very hard to get uh, Kwame Frimpong, who is the public relations officer of the Konfu Anochi Teaching Hospital and the latest coming in there is that doctors and nurses at the hospital have called off their strike. The doctors went on strike over concerns uh, with security following a protest by Abu Abu youth who stormed the hospital demanding the body of a baby who died at the hospital. The, 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 we're now joined on the line again by public relations officer of the hospital, Kwame Frimpong. Uh, so, so I'm asking what conclusions the doctors and nurses came to before calling off the strike. I think since this crisis began, it's made um, a number of demands. Specifically, uh, with regard to security arrangements at the facility, and also some of their residential uh, facilities. And uh, at the last regional security council meeting yesterday, I think the central regional minister gave um, um, some assurances with regard to the other. Uh, concerns that they had with regards to their residential facilities. Uh, mm. I think they saw the deployment of limited personnel as they wanted, and they, they, they felt convinced that now they are secured. Then the family um, also rendered an unqualified apology to the doctors and nurses and pledged uh, to allow the police to continue investigations into the incident and they also retracted all threats of violence against the staff. And I think this developments helped to wow. um, uh, convince our staff that uh, I think the security situation um, is a control at the moment. So is it half solved or fully solved, this issue? Uh, 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 with regard to security um, arrangements, I think it, it has likely been resolved and we formed a small committee made up of the a rep of the doctors and that of the nurses to help us to further improve the situation if there's a need for that. So they know that uh, if there's a need to further expand the arrangements that we've made, we have a working arrangement to ensure that. And right. So let's, let's delve a little into the substantive issue. The youth were demanding the body of this child dead or alive from the hospital, which raised all this uh, brouhaha that has res resulted in the strike. Now, the, 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 after you set up the committee to investigate, what have you come with? What kinds of concessions have you come with, uh, come to with the family involved in this? Um, at the meeting, the, the family realized that indeed um, the threat 
that were taken by the steps that were taken by the hospital with regards to resolve to was the best way forward. Mm. You know, it, as soon as we realized that the um, body should have terminated at the mock, but it didn't, we called in the police to help us to um, investigate so as to establish the truth as to the whereabouts of the body. The police have investigated the matter since then. If I arrested one person, granted me then I have we arrested him and the person's intention at the moment. They also asked for some message to be interrogated. They've done all these interrogations and we are expecting that uh, they will soon conclude their uh, investigation. The family said they test that that's the best way forward and that they will cooperate fully with the processes and they will accept the outcome of a police investigation no matter how it turns out. So, the Ministry of Health yeah. Committee has also been the, at the hospital. Uh, we also expecting that committee also to um, soon disclose its uh, findings and recommendations. So both investigations are ongoing, but uh, as we speak, they are, we are yet to be uh, told exactly what the conclusions are. Right. So, so I mean, you just told us that there have been some arrests and uh, de detentions and investigations into this. Now, yes. what, what, what pointers are these indicating? Is it to suggest that the hospital admits that uh, there were some flaws in handling the death, the birth, the death of this child? You know, we have standard prisoner procedures for handling of uh, steel bombs. And usually, the body should have terminated, the body should have terminated at the mall. In this particular incident, it didn't. Okay. And that's why the police was quickly and, um, invited to take over the case by the management of this hospital. Right. So, right. So, let me qu quickly ask you, now that you've called off the strike, it means uh, as soon as possible. Is it like from this evening or tomorrow that the doctors will resume duties? Yeah, it, it, it's likely to take full effect from tomorrow morning. Right. So, if there happen to be any infractions of this security arrangements that have been put in place by the police, what, what will the, the doctors and nurses do? Would they go on strike again? Um, I believe the arrangements are sufficiently uh, foolproof to allow for any breaches of security. Right. We now have the presence of the police and then the military. It's a combined team of the military and then the police. And um, I believe that uh, we are very well secure at the moment. Well, thank you very much, uh, Kwame Frimpong, Public Relations Officer of the Konfuanochi Teaching Hospital. So today's big story is that the nurses and doctors there have called off their strike. And as you heard, the PRO saying they are returning to duty as soon as as possible. Now, former Minister of State at the Ministry of Finance, Dr. Anthony Akoto Osa says the three billion Chinese loan government is borrowing from the Chinese government for several infrastructural development projects is a bad deal, so the president should renegotiate the terms. He was speaking at a policy forum organized by IEA to find solutions on how to save the city. 6.2 billion on interest. Now, who calls that? You go and borrow money at the cost, it interest payments will be due. So when we say you've gone from 8 billion to 23, what type of borrowing are you doing? Let me give you a good example, and this is not politics. The Chinese loan of 3 billion, it's a bad deal. And I repeat it here again. I've even asked the president to renegotiate. It is not regular to pay 1% commitment fee on a commercial loan. Concessionary loan, yes. 1% of 3 billion is how much? So far, we've paid 54 million with nothing. Only 600 million has come in. It's just not a good deal. This is not politics. We said it then, and I'm saying it now. But it cannot be done at the ministerial level. Chinese don't, they like monkeys to play by sizes. It was negotiated by the president. Only the president can negotiate it. The minister, they won't mind him. I've worked with the Chinese. 1%, one, 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 one percent on the undisbursed balance. If I were at CDB and I'm an officer at CDB, I would not disperse because I can make more money from not disbursing to you. It's, it's, it's no lie. It's a commercial loan. And in any case, of all the projects, it's a fact, you know. Not all of them were ready for implementation. So why go and borrow money that you're not ready to use? And this is not only you need to uh, 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 NDC. When we borrowed the first one billion, not all the projects were ready to be implemented. That is not good financing. 
So if you need 100 million, ask for 100 million. So that the 1 percent, and, and that is why the interest rate is going up. You are paying money on something that you should not be paying for. So you have to be selective. Well, on the line now, we have John Gachi, who is a financial analyst and chartered economist. We will be having a chat on this issue. So, John, um, in your estimation or understanding, what are the strings that are holding the full disbursement of this loan, of which we understand governments have already started servicing? Right, John, can you hear me? No, I can't hear you well. Right, so if you can hear me, I'm asking what exactly are the strings that are holding uh, the full disbursement of this loan, which appears to uh, already be, is being serviced? I'm not, I'm not hearing you, please. Right. Um, John Gachi is a financial analyst and chartered economist. We're trying to uh, get some conversation with him over this $3 billion Chinese development loan. And so I'll try a couple more times, and then we will see how we go. So, um, John, I'm asking you, if you can hear me, uh, it appears that the full disbursement of this $3 billion Chinese uh, development loan is... is is being hampered. I'm asking, what is causing this, uh, the, the food disbursement? What is hampering the food disbursement? Right, this is today's big story. And as you heard, a former Minister of State of the Finance Ministry, Dr. Anthony Akoto, says that three billion Chinese uh, development loan that government is borrowing from the Chinese government is a bad deal, so the president should renegotiate. We're making efforts to get John Gachi, who is a financial analyst and a chartered economist, to uh, speak to the issue. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. This is today's big story. Well, let's hit the phone lines again and speak to John Gachi, who is a financial analyst and chartered economist. So, so John, I was asking that um, Dr. Akoto Ose is, is asking the president to renegotiate this uh, 3 billion Chinese development loan because it is a bad deal. Do you agree with him? Is this a bad deal? Uh, well, it is, it is difficult uh, to uh, ascertain that it's a, a bad deal. But I do support him uh, for the fact that uh, there have been too much delay about the disbursement. Uh, only a small fraction of the money uh, has been disbursed, and a lot of our uh, capital uh, projects have been uh, contingent on this uh, particular uh, uh, money. Uh, and that is affecting the rolling out of development projects uh, in the country. It's affecting... Uh, the effectiveness of uh, uh, budget performance, especially from last year, and uh, it's likely to affect this year also. And from that perspective, I think uh, there is a need to, uh, I mean, fast track the processes which are left to ensure that the money comes uh, to contribute to the development of the country. But John, what can be done to fast track it? And what exactly is causing these delays? I think what is causing this delay is known by those who are involved in the negotiation process. If there is any serious difficulty, it is important for them to uh, let the people of Ghana know because all of us have put our hope on this Chinese loan. We know that some disbursements have been made and we can see what is happening in the Western region and we are happy about that. And we also want more of the money to be disbursed for most of the projects that have been contingent on that. Uh, to, to, to roll out for the people of Ghana to become happy. So we are concerned, and for that matter, we'll be uh, very happy if the people who are, con uh, I mean, involved in the negotiation process tell us if there is any serious difficulty uh, for us to bear uh, with, with them uh, and wait a little longer. And that is what I think is very important for a good economic government. But, but, but do you not have a hint or a 
hunch about exactly what's causing these delays because, I mean, those who negotiated the, the deal are not telling us exactly why the loan is delaying. Uh, well, since they are not telling us, we need to ask them to tell, <laughs> to tell us because we, we, uh, we need to know that. <laughs> they need to let us know because they have actually given us a promise based on that. So it is their duty to tell us. Uh, we only have scanty information about why the delay is being uh, 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 is going on, and that is not enough. We don't want to thrive on the uh, rumors or uh, this scanty information. It is very important that they tell us only what is going on, and that we will understand. If there is a need to bear with them, we bear with them. If there is a need uh, to put more pressure on the Chinese government, then we we call for that and support our government to do that. But the silence, I think, is not in uh, uh, in the right direction. Right, so, I mean, my, my concern now is that if you also agree with the former uh, Minister of State, uh, the Finance Ministry, that the President needs to renegotiate, what, should, what exactly should the President be renegotiating? I think I didn't talk about renegotiation. I say I do agree with the sentiment that the loan is overly delayed. Uh, I, I'm not too sure that renegotiation... <coughs> is the way forward because uh, if we want to open that box, we'll be blaming Parliament also, of which uh, uh, Honorable Dr. Kutuse is bad. Uh, they know the nitty-gritty about the contract and they have approved it and they have given authorization to government to go ahead. And uh, if by this time the same members of Parliament are coming out with uh, uh, the, uh, uh, this statement that there is a need for renegotiation, then what did they look at? We need to be blaming Parliament also making is that there is something that ought to be told the people of Ghana. Uh, it is when that is revealed that we can assess and determine that there is a need for renegotiation, but that has not been done. Until that is done, I don't think I'm in position to call for renegotiation. But I think right. I, I share his sentiment that the loan is overly delayed, especially uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the comparison that he made with uh, uh, when you go to uh, the international financial market. It doesn't take so long a time for the money to come. Uh, 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 so it is important that uh, uh, we, we get some information as to what is going on. Right. So, John, quickly, I mean, this $3 billion, uh, Chinese development loan, do we really need it? I mean, I know that asking this question is taking us back to the early stages of the negotiation. But seeing that the money is not coming, should we have gone in in the first place for this? Uh, yes, because at the time that uh, we went for the loan, that <coughs> was the best opportunity. Uh, we went in for this loan at the time that we have not structured very well our macro finances, micro finance situation, microeconomic situations very well. Uh, for that matter, it was not easy to go into uh, the international financial market. So that was uh, a conduit for us to use. So as to go in for it, I, I do not think that there is any question about. Uh, uh, why we are going for Chinese law. But the issue is that now we have opened ourselves to, uh, to be accepted in the international financial market and some of the tranches have started coming. Uh, so if you are talking, of, uh, I mean, withdrawing from uh, the, the earlier agreement and going into renegotiation, that will be difficult. And I think going in for that law is not bad at all, especially when you go to West region and you see the pictures of the gas project and you focus into the future, the synergy that that will have in uh, 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 rolling out the development in the country. One cannot say that that is uh, a bad, uh, bad attempt at all. Right, John Gachi, we are very grateful for your time. John is a financial analyst and a chartered economist. My name is Stephen Antti, and this is today's big story. Also on today's big story, the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, PURC, has ordered the Ghana Water Company to suspend its intended shutdown of the Pong Water Works uh, in respect of the water crisis situation that has hit parts of Accra and Tema. So uh, among the directives included that the suspension should take immediate effect and that um, the Ghana Water Company should furnish the Commission with a schedule of works and planned completion date for the repair uh, to the transmission pipeline supplying water 
from the wager uh, and expansion for interconnection works at the Pond Water Works as well. Well, the, this statement was signed by Nana Ya uh, Jantua, who is the Director of Public Relations and External Affairs at the PURC. So I have with me in the studio quickly uh, Leonard Shankorte, who is a policy analyst at ISODEC, to kind of walk us through uh, this issue and uh, perhaps probe whether a directive of this nature is what we need to resolve the water situation. Uh, thanks for joining us here on today's big story. Thank you, Mr. Anti. Now, this order seemed to be very lengthy. A lot of things are being said in the order, but the most important thing is that the PURC is ordering the Ghana Water not to go ahead with this intended shutdown of the Pong Water Works, which was announced that it will shut down on Monday. Your, your reaction, quick reaction. I think it shouldn't have come to this. Uh, and it's unfortunate that it has to come to this. But then this is only a reflection that there isn't much talking going on. There isn't much communication going on behind the scene. And especially when it is following a similar situation where without much um, consultations, GWC went out and mm. uh, announced a policy move on prepaid uh, water metering. I think uh, GWC should be doing enough uh, consultation. So such an order is an indictment on the Ghana Water Company, you would say, right? Yes, it's an, oh, it's an indictment it's, of the it's, whole it's, institution. It's, it's, it's an indictment of the GWCL, but then also it's also a reflection on how the GWCL perceived mm. an organization such mm. as uh, PULC. I mean, the PULC is supposed to be a regulator in the sector. But then in most developing countries, such institutions are very weak and are usually not taken as seriously uh, by organizations such as GWCL because, I mean, if the, if the uh, PLC were to be that strong, every move that GWCL were to take it to be looking over its shoulders. But then, yes, it's unfortunate. Uh, it's uh, an indictment on the GWCL, but then it also tells the situation of uh, So you the think PLC. the PRC is weak, really? Uh, uh, yes, I mean, yes, and no. yes, yes, yes. I mean, they are doing. Or mainly yes. I mean, they are doing. I mean, they've, all, they've, they've issued this directive. I mean, they are doing. And what happens next? I mean, they are, yes, they are doing their best, uh, trying to be assertive. Mm. But then, for instance, you need the manpower, the expertise uh, involved to be able to probe some of the activities of GWCL. I mean, this is a company full of engineers and, and, and what have you. So usually the uh, uh, PULC should also be uh, equipped with such competencies to be able to handle not only that, but then also the finances to be able to follow through some mm. of these, uh, uh, some, some of these uh, public declarations. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I will say that it's good that the PULC is trying to assert itself because uh, it is the PULC that the public look, looks up to for uh, mm. protection. Because of late, it looks like GWCL is behaving as though it were a private entity. Do you expect that GWC will follow through with this order? Uh, I, I suspect so because now, and I think that there is a reason why the PULC want to make it public now. Mm. So that if uh, GW, if it had made a, a similar request on the GWCL behind the scenes and GWCL is ig ignoring such mm -hmm. demands, now it is public. So now, uh, if GWCL do not go per some of the details in then there, PRC then has publicly, the authority uh, to no, take then it. publicly GWCL is showing disrespect it's to showing disrespect the PRC, to and the public will also come out. So now I think the PRC has been forced. Uh, that's what I think now because we don't know what had gone on behind the scene to come out public because communication uh, have not gone on well. So uh, quickly, quickly, Mr. Quarte, I mean, we have just about 30 seconds to wrap up. I mean, the, the, the water problem facing this country has dragged on for about 30 years. What's the solution? What's the pragmatic solution I think to end it all once and I for think all? So we have peace of mind I think and water. I think there are two issues that we've been dodging over the years. The issue of investments and the issue of freeing the sector of the political influences that exist in there. 
But then we've been sidestepping these solutions, and that is why we've been having these recurrent uh, situations. We tried uh, AVRL. Mm -hmm. AVRL came in with management expertise, but then without the resources, they could not perform. Uh, GWCL are also, is also filled with some competent staff, but then without the resources, uh, we'll be going nowhere. We'll so we have nowhere. to address the issue of investment, which is uh, critical, and then also have a structure that insulates uh, GWCL, a little bit from the political influences, mm. but then do not free it of uh, uh, public oversight. Public oversight and responsibility. This is today's big story, and grateful to uh, Leonard Sean Quarte, a policy analyst from ICEDEC. We'll be right back with an interactive segment. Well, welcome back to the interactive segment, and I have. Um, Beautifully dressed, Gladys Oluredu. Hey, what's up, man? I do. You man. look chic, man. Oh, I have to. You have to. Do uh, you have water? I must <laughs> too. <laughs> Polish on it. I mean, I mean, we 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 had to place a call and get water yeah. for the house. And I mean, this is a moment so you should worrying. be doing lots of POD. POD, what's POD? Polish on debt and it, oh it gets going. Oh dear. What so can you do? You, if you have the choice, yeah, you opt for the other one. But <laughs> so what, what's cannot. trending on social media? What's everybody saying? Um, now we have kids who are also adding their voice mm. to the plight mm. of the acute water shortage and it's affecting their school because imagine that your child has to wake up 4 a.m. To go and look for water, and by the yeah. time he finds water, come back home to even finish with home chores and all that. Going to and school. If, if they live as far as you live and have to come to school in the city, imagine. that's a big deal. Yeah, so they have added their oh voice. They've been sharing with us what they are going through mm. before they go to school. But what are you going through? My personally, I, I am used to that situation because they, uh, in the house where I live, I provide my own water. Water. So Yes. Right, that is so take charge now. Then. Right, thank you. This is where we get interactive with you right here on Join News on JN Interactive. Stay with me. My name is Gladys Osei already. Join us via our social media platforms. Facebook.com slash Joy News on TV, Twitter.com slash Joy News on TV. The handles are at Joy News on TV and has JN Interactive GH. The email is Joy News IM at MultiTVWorld.com. Join us, share with us how affected your children are by the acute water shortage that's ongoing. Well, so it's still water, the acute water shortage hit by people in the greater Accra and, and some parts of the central region is what you have been talking about on social media. Let's take this piece. When we return, we will tell you how most school children miss school today because of lack of water. Water, energy, the two basic necessities of life. These two have become the much sought after in Ghana for some time now. It's either power supply is disrupted or water has to be rationed according to a certain schedule. It is very, very clear that in the past we've also had challenges with the vandalization of pipelines across the country. It is up to the board to help make sure that we can come up with strategies to ensure that the pipelines are protected. Energy and water have become the core message of politicians, a message that runs through every manifesto of political parties seeking power. However, the picture doesn't seem to change. The same problem recurring regime after regime with no permanent solution in sight. One reason or the other has been attributed to the perennial energy disruption in the country. It's either caused by shortage of gas and financial difficulties of the VRA, which makes it difficult to procure the right quantities of crude oil and diesel to bring all their plants into operation or the crisis was caused by low levels of water in the Akosumbu Dam. But during our period in office, 
the uh, lake failed okay, because of the periodic drought that it has gone through. With the failure of the lake meant that our biggest generating source had actually failed you know, was now in a position not to be able to deliver any power at all. When somebody tells you we have generated an extra 376 capacity and it's unprecedented, it is not the truth. People have been in power for eight years. What did you do? Today they are telling us solution to whatever. What did you do? They rather brought in toys. That did never, that never worked. That was not powered. They brought in, they brought in some plants that never worked. For the past six days, over 70 communities in the greater Accra and some parts of the central region have been hit by acute water shortage. This is not new, a very frequent occurrence. People have therefore adopted several means to gain access to water. Minister for Water Resources, Works and Housing, Collins Dowda says government at the moment is adopting short-term plans to resolve the situation while its plans were long-term solution. These interventions include a pond water uh, system that is being built that we expect to be completed at the end of this year. We also have the Atma Rura that is also bringing on board 12.3 uh, um, million gallons of water a day and also the desalination plant at Teshi that will also bring in 30 million gallons of water a day. If you put this together, we are going to have about 158 million gallons of water a day at the end of this year. He adds, it is uncertain that the country will ever find a permanent solution. Uh, it's, it's, it's a difficult question. It is our wish as a government that everybody has access to safe, affordable and reliable water. That is the vision of His Excellency the President. But to do it requires a lot of effort, a lot of investment. Etonamsi, Joy News. So that's what it is, a country where politicians make promises they don't most often keep to it. Today our focus is on children, most children of school going age missed school today because they were in long queues waiting to fetch water. Joy News chanced on some of them and they shared their thoughts on the situation. Uh, today I won't go to school because of the water. We'll be selling porridge so if I'm not able to fetch the water I will get a little money to go to school. At the same time it will affect I and my family too. You see. And without water, there's no human being, there's no nothing. So, at least, even though we, school is very important, and at the same time, the water is also important. So, the best way, at least, I have Friday. So, I will I fetch it today, and tomorrow, too, I'll go to school. I'm here for water. Why? Why are you not in school? Why didn't you go to school? Because the water. Yeah. Where do you go to school? Government. After fetching the water, what will you do with it? I'll go in the bath and go to school. What time will you go to school today? Yes, I don't know. I'll just go when my madam beats me. That's all. Why are you not in school today? Because of the water. We don't have water. We don't have water to bath. Two days now, I have no bath. So when was the last time you went to school? I went to school uh, the Monday. Come to fetch water. Because there is no water in the house. So I'm going to fetch water to get bath to school. But because the line is too much, so I do not go to school today. Because of the water. Because of the water, there is no water in the house, so I want water for my parents. Quite an unfortunate situation there that children are missing school just because they can't have access to basic necessity water. Let's see what you have been sharing with us on WhatsApp. So today our first WhatsApp comes from McDonald who says, not at all, but for others I pity them. To those affected, sorry, will it will be well. 
Kencho say, Martha, I haven't bathed for four days. Why? We are really suffering. <laughs> Kencho, don't come close to me. <laughs> Richmond for Supreme says, We are in a country surrounded by lakes, rivers, and waterfalls. Yet, still, we hardly find water. Hmm, Ghana? That's coming from Richmond. Musa says, It's very bad and irritating to see people suffer due to water shortage. Musa Abatwa. Ido Johnson says, Oh God of hosts, Africa, need your intervention. Send your Holy Spirit. Mm, that's coming from Joe. Romo says, It looks like the country is paused and nothing seems to go on. That's coming from Romo. Mm. Opokwajaman says, Chia, oh Ghana, this is your Chia Opokwajaman, please, Papa. Vandi says, sad isn't it to live without water? May God have mercy on us. Vandi Taylor, thank you for your contribution. Kwame Ansa says, let's pray for God to help Ghana. We need the prayers badly. Karish says, complaining won't solve this, but praying can solve this. The God of waters will perform wonders. Let there be water in Ghana. I am sure very soon we'll start commanding the water to also flow well. So um, that's it for now on WhatsApp. So um, is there a way forward? How will these kids want government to solve the situation? Well, they told us their peace of mind. <laughs> At least they should help us, especially with the education one, the, the little ones. Without water, we are, we are nothing on earth, I see. So the, the best thing to do is that they should help us. At least, even though they'll give us today to wear or close it, it's will feel better. But at least you give us one and the rest, there's nothing. Even yesterday, I went to fetch water. I went around 6 or 7. I came around 9. Now I slept. Now today I'm still continuing. So it's affecting almost everybody in the country. After Monday, you haven't gone to school. No. So what do you have to tell the president and the government? They, uh, they, should, they should open the water. What's your name? Don't talk. Okay. Well, so simple. They should open the water, let the water run through the taps, and the child can go to school. Nice one there. Well, we have some good news, though, for those of you who live around the Weijia, Bawe, Awoshi, and its environs. You should be having water flow through your taps by now. Well, so yesterday, when the minister, Collins Dowder, charged the Awoshi uh, waterworks, engineers were busily working on the transmission line, and this morning, they announced that they had fixed the problem. So good news, now you can enjoy water. So if you live in those areas, quickly uh, drop your Facebook comment. Let me know if you have it indeed. Now let me speak with the communications director of the Ghana Water Company to know how soon other affected areas will have their water situation solved. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Stanley Marty. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, yes. Thank you for your time here on JN Interactive. Um, you must be happy the wager transmission line had been fixed, right? Say again, please. I'm asking, you must be happy now that the wager transmission line had been fixed. How soon are we expected to have water flow in other affected areas? Um, I'm sorry, but I think you've got the wrong standing. Ah, uh -huh, right. Um, forgive me, who am I talking to, please? I guess I'll have to find who I spoke with. So let me catch my breather here. In a moment, we'll be back. We sincerely do apologize. Indeed, we got the wrong Stanley, but now... I'm happy to say we have the correct Stanley with us on JN Interactive. Stanley is the Communications Manager for Ghana Water Company Limited. Thanks for your time, Stanley. Thank you very much. Um, by now, you should be happy that our wager transmission line has been fixed. How soon are we expected to have water flow um, in other affected areas? Okay. Um, uh, water uh, um, 
the properties of water is very different from that of light. Mm. Okay, so it takes um, time for water to find its own level, um, such that we need to start the production process all over again. Now, what we do is we need to abstract the water. It goes through very huge pipelines into uh, um, aerators, uh, filters, um, clarifiers, into, and then into the final clear reservoir. All these take and, and, and take a lot of time. So, and then after, and then we need to build up um, our, our, our reservoirs, our reservoirs to a very appreciable level before we can start uh, distributing into uh, into the metropolis. So it takes a lot of time and it's slow. Now, because the pipelines have been out of water for the past two, three days, the lines are, um, are, are dried up and air may have filled in uh, the pipeline. So we need to keep up with um, the air, then uh, water can get to the distribution lines into uh, home, the homes of consumers. So all these take a lot of time. Now we have been monitoring the system since we started production this morning. And there's, um, there's some, in, there, we have information that water has gotten to some areas along Dansoman, Takama, and, and, and all that. It will take a bit of time for it to get to areas like uh, Aboso, Kain, North Kanishi, Tesano, areas that are further a bit from the winter treatment plant. So we we'll ask consumers to, to bear with us whilst we take our time to fill in um, uh, the pipelines and to build on the pressure, uh, to build on the pressure water to get into the homes of um, everybody. We also um, will take this opportunity to um, thank our consumers for bearing with us whilst we go, whilst, um, uh, uh, we, we go through these crises. But we are hopeful that um, later by tomorrow morning or later by close of day tomorrow, um, the, uh, all areas within the western part of Accra should have, should have access to, to, to water. Thank you. That sounds like good news there. But so um, briefly, tell us, the PURC has released a press statement instructing that you do not shut down the Pong Water Works on Monday. Um, what will be your response to that? Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. I wouldn't want to uh, respond to this uh, because we are not privy to the PURC uh, press release. But the thing is, uh, the Ghana Water Company Limited is responsible for serving the general public with water. There is no way we we'll shut down both treatment plants and deprive the whole of Petaka of water. Okay, so so that when we know or when we think that the situation is that bad, then we wouldn't shut down from, we wouldn't wait for anybody to instruct us before we shut down uh, our plant or before we decide not to shut down our plant. Okay, we are the, the excess on the field. We are monitoring the system, and so we will we will take the right decisions at the right time. But we wouldn't want to respond to the PLC statement because we are not privy to it. But we ourselves are monitoring uh, the situation and then we'll come out at appropriately uh, when the time is due. Thank you very much. In other words, the plan to shut down the pond water works still holds. And for now, it still holds. So we are still monitoring the system. If we realize that everything is moving on smoothly and we can shut down the pond plant without any technical, without any problems, we will do so. But if you have to shut down phone and it will create problems for, the, for consumers, we wouldn't. So we ourselves are assessing um, the situation and then we'll come out appropriately. All right, Stanley, thank you so much for your time, for sharing yes, with us sure, um, sure. the way forward about the water. So the good news is that according to the communications manager, Stanley Marte of the Ghana Water Company Limited, by, close, by tomorrow evening, you should ho have water flowing through your tap. I catch it with her here. When I come back, We'll be taking your comments on Facebook. On Facebook, uh, we posted most children of school going age missed school today due to the acute water shortage. According to Joy News' investigations, how has the water situation affected you? And you shared your thoughts with us. Kencho Mugabe says, Masa are not bad for four days, why? Uh, Benj Benjilo Subtract says, John Mahama promised quality education and he's delivering. I witnessed some parents in Anonga and Keta calling Mahama a liar. Well, uh, why is McDonald laughing at Mugabe? 
Eric Genesis says, I'm from Dansoman, but I'm currently in Nungbatu Bath, and I know Antwa and Nogopo deities. Um, deities will never forgive those beautiful. <laughs> Eric Genesis, you are very mad. But I'm told Dansoman has water now, so come back home. Frank O'Boy Emmanuel says, Indeed, water shortage affects me because today the water I will use to bath to go to school is, has become a problem. So I will plead with the government to do something about it. Ken Kofi Queen says, This shouldn't happen to us, but it's all because of our bad leaders. Hey, GH. Frimpon OC says, Shortage leading to absenteeism is a serious problem that needs to be tackled because if teachers had absented themselves for one reason or the other, our pay would have been deducted. So the government should also be accountable if these students fail their exams. I believe you are a teacher, Frimpon. Kwesi K says, I opened my tab today and I heard the tab say, Chia, who be you? <laughs> are you the only stranger in Accra? Please leave me alone. Find your way call. <laughs> I like that one, Kwesi K. <laughs> Daniel Jacobo says, I don't believe that they cause. Even places where there is abundance of water, they don't even go to school. That's just a flimsy excuse. Mm, I say. Max Hayram Ahiava says, very bad. It seems this country is retrogressing. Even people living in the desert are getting water, but we that are surrounded with rivers, lakes, etc., are the ones suffering. We need national policy now. God save Ghana. Um, Kudu says, this is serious because of water. Children didn't go to school. The government needs to wake up. Uh, Hussein Butri says, this is dangerous for a nation like Ghana where basic essential elements for survival is deprived from the people. Everybody in Ghana must wake up and work to make Ghana work. It begins with me and you. Richmond Bosompim says, okay, there's plenty of water and falls. Uh, uh, Uchena Tommy says, no stream in Ghana, I beg. Uh, Johnson Obinampofo says, when will this country be serious? At least for once, everything is bizarre. In fact, the institutional heads must all be sacked. We are tired with their explanations. Because government is elected to solve problems, not explaining them. Ayaba John says, we are affected badly by the acute water shortage. But we are very optimistic and happy that... Sir, okay, Musa, I, I remember you from um, WhatsApp. Uh, Derry Levis says, I was a victim, but today I'm enjoying under my shower. I thank God. With God, everything is possible. Um, let's say, uh, Dodu Janet says, I used pure water to bath this morning. Hmm, Ghana. That's, that's sad. Pure water, how many of it did you use? Uh, well, Moomin Love says, not yet in my community. It affected me badly because it affected my friends and good people. GH, may Allah see us through. Um, I, okay, so let me take a few more. Samora Ogusu says, uh, I pity those who are suffering, but I believe things will normalize and they will enjoy very, very soon. Ayintara Ape says, for me, water flows anytime there is doomso, <laughs> doomso. We don't get access to water and we experience uncountable light out. Why is it a crime to be posted to the village? Uh, oh God, help them cover up. Kulo Isa Ibn Ali says that. Let me quickly end with Karim Dalo who says, how? It's not true. So you also don't believe um, water shortage can make the children miss classes ours. Well, thank you so much for contributing to JN Interactive. We come your way again tomorrow. But Steve, um, what's up? Uh, very sad uh, water <laughs> crisis. And um, as the water shortage in parts of Accra continues, uh, more residents are finding alternative means to get portable water. This, this is uh, one of the stories we are expecting for Joy News at 8. Mm. And we also, the uh, government has agreed to propose to name a street after former Joy FM presenter 
Komla Afaka Dumo, the Member of Parliament for Tamale South, Haruna Idrisu, announced that government has directed the Ketu South District Assembly, where Komla Dumo hails from, to choose a street for that purpose. That's, um, that's, uh, that's well celebrated. Yeah, so um, these and many more you should expect on Journeys at 8 with Israel I. My name is Stephen Antti. My name is Gladys Osei Oredu. We are grateful for your company. Thank you.